Yo, nope, 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 don't do it, don't do it. Get out of here, get out of here, copyright. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started with some of the games here in the... God damn it, I keep dragging stuff with my dock. Stay on the other screen. Now join... Oh my god. I don't think that's an intended effect of the app. <laughs> um. Hello viewers, and today I've got something really cool for you all. Now, I know what you're thinking. What the hell is up with this blank desktop? Well, as a matter of fact, I actually now have a dual screen setup, and I'll show that briefly in uh, another video. Not going to be too brief, but not going to be like over extensive, you know. It's just a very basic thing that I did. Anyway, today's video is not going to be focusing on that. It's going to be focusing on something that I feel is just 50 million times cooler. Well, maybe if you think 50 million times cooler is a better sounding phrase than 20% cooler, then you're a redneck. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started here. Let's get going with Windows Developer Preview. What the hell is this? Well, you're about to find out. Now, it's based on Windows 7, so I'm going to have to set it for Windows 7, and we want to customize it. Now, here is your teaser. Windows 8 build 8102. At least, I think that's the build number. I have to remember. I'm always slacking on stuff. And, of course, it goes on to the secondary screen, so let me just bring it on over here. So what I need to do, I definitely need two processor cores for this. Two gigs of RAM is a bit low, so I'm going to go ahead and give it three gigs just because of the peace of mind of multitasking, especially considering what we're going to be doing. We don't need to go crazy, but we don't need to, you know, be like a flagship thing. In terms of our um, other stuff... I probably want to remove the network adapter considering initially I want to make sure that the date and time doesn't get reset by the network. I'll figure it out later. I'll just for now I'll leave it off and then I'll come back to it later if I feel like I need to enable it. So I think for now, um, other than maybe we need to, we'll leave that stuff in there. Um, synchronize the time. Yeah, actually we'll do that. Um, let's see. I'll probably enable the hard disk buffering just because that actually does come in handy. And, um, yeah. So, let's go ahead and start it up. Go ahead and put it in full screen here. Nice glitch. Alrighty. So, one thing that's interesting about this is it just says Windows Developer Preview. There's nothing fancy about designating that it's version 8. It just says Developer Preview. It's very nondescript. But you have to keep in mind that it doesn't have to be. It's meant to be more of a, a developer preview. That's what the whole target audience is supposed to be for this sort of thing. Anyways, the setup process looks very familiar. It's got the typical Windows 7 language setup uh, stuff here and it's all correct. Notice how the title is centered versus being offset to the left. That's one thing that's different. It doesn't have any version number, it just says Windows. And of course you still get the repair your computer prompt, although I don't know how functional that would be. Anyway, let's go and start setup. Now the cool thing about this is that you do not need a product key because it's already embedded into the disk image. So you don't need to worry about uh, any kind of product key, which is nice. I mean, obviously if you needed one, you know, Microsoft back in the day provided it. And I'm pretty sure you could still find old forum posts that provide the product key. Obviously, we're going to accept this. Now, I'm going to go ahead and point this out right away. I have the Windows 8 build 8102 disk image with the developer tools, and that's a very uncommon disk image. I mean, back when uh, Windows 8 first came out, you know, it was a very common thing to just go out and download right from Microsoft's, right after Microsoft's build conference of 2011. So obviously, it has the sample applications in it, but you could have chose to I've gotten the disk image without the developer tools and all that stuff, but I think I think the developer tools are a lot cooler to take a look at. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and format our hard drive, and we're going to go ahead and get started with the installation. So it is basically identical to that of Windows 7. The only thing that's different is that the background has changed to this sort of pseudo Windows 9X style bluish gray thing. A very subtle change, but I like it. You know, it's, it doesn't have to be fancy. It's basically just an installation screen. You don't really need a fancy installation screen. So we're going to go ahead and let this install, and I'll be back. Okay, so installation is about done here. Now, this might look very, very similar to that of Windows 7 setup, but after this initial reboot of, uh, you know, post-installation, this is where it changes quite differently. 
Now, it still looks very much so like Windows 7 setup, but it doesn't at the same time. And here's what I mean by that. So, when it boots up, you know, you get the typical boot screen with the loading animation. This is obviously a lot different comparative to Windows 7, but watch carefully because it's going to have a little message come up saying, wait for it, setup is updating registry settings. Now, that's a Windows 7 style message, but it's been pushed down to the bottom. Normally, Windows 8 doesn't say that. So, this is the only version of Windows 8, to my knowledge, that does that. Does that. And then this is different. Now, this whole refresh and reset your PC thing was actually um, something entirely new because the look is a lot different, as you see. And the font's quite odd, but it does have a purpose to it. It also does change the screen resolution from 1024 by 768 to 800 by 600 which is normally a resolution that Windows 8 does not like. And it also doesn't say getting system ready, it usually says getting ready. And then obviously it fades out and does its stuff. A very clean setup process, very clean, very to the point. It gets the job done, pretty much. So, yeah. Any second now, installation should be done, and we should be greeted at the license term screen. And here we are. Now, Windows 8 did this too, but obviously this is the pre-release version. Now, the look is quite different comparative to the out-of-box experience for Windows 7. Well, anything other than that, but um, you obviously get your support for your developer preview, OS, Note 8 on it, sample applications, Visual Studio, Microsoft Expression Blend 5, Office Viewer 2007, which is odd because by that point, the Office Viewer probably had a 2010 release. So I don't know why they would have included the 2007 version in there. Who, who really knows? But again, there's also the, sam the sample applications for Windows Developer Preview in here. And of course, this is just a very typical Windows pre or Microsoft and Windows pre-release software. It will stop running on the 30th of June 2012. You will not receive any other notice. You may not be able to access data used with the software when it stops running and blah, blah, blah. But we accept the license terms. Now, notice this accept button and how it's green. Now, this was a design characteristic of Windows 8 that started here at the very beginning. And the whole point was to have accent colors. The whole interface was designed to be customizable. However, in this very, very early beta, because everything was so early... And so, like, beta, buggy, whatever, the whole interface is green. And if you think you can change it, no. You literally cannot change it. You have to leave it as it is. Anyway, so we're going to go and set the name as VMware just because. And notice how the animations flow in. It's a design characteristic from the then-new Windows Phone 7. At least as far as I'm aware, it was new back at that time. Obviously, Windows Phone 7 being from Windows 7. But um, obviously, you know, they put the interface design queue into this. So we're going to go ahead and customize the settings just because we want to see what all there is. And there's no like special like crazy amount of special animations because again this is a very early beta so most of the time they use fades or a different t uh, style of animation which worked with Windows 7's frameworks. So obviously you want to install all that stuff, all the updates, smart screen, yeah that works. And obviously, if you want to make the Windows Store better. Now, these toggles don't mean anything about the Windows Store because the Windows Store doesn't even work yet. Basically, this was just there as a placeholder. And, the, you know, the Windows Store first came in at uh, Windows 8 Consumer Preview. And that was the very first time the store ever worked. And you could download apps from uh, actual registered developers. And you could actually run apps on Windows 8 and multitask with the desktop. And it was a very unique experience. I actually got to experience it myself. Although, rather, again, I was about 12 years old at the time that I tried that. So I don't remember much. But, you know, it was a very different feeling. It was a lot better than what I was used to at the time with Windows XP. Now, since this is beta software, you have to have the customer experience improvement program on. That's part of the license agreement. And also, another thing that's part of the license agreement is the error reporting, because obviously you're using beta software. You're required to send data to Microsoft, whether you like it or not, because obviously it's uh, beta software. That's the whole point of it, is to send data to Microsoft, so that way they can improve their software. Now, since I don't have any networking... We're just going to have to set up with a local account. Now, normally, if I left the networking on, it would actually bring up a sign-in prompt for the Windows Live ID. And Windows Live ID is essentially the modern-day version of the Microsoft account. 
I'm going to go ahead and press enter on that. <laughs> that loading symbol is very hard to see in that green. Fortunately, they changed it later. And here's the initial setup screen. Notice how it says preparing your PC versus going to a rainbow screen or a black screen like the later betas did. Especially consumer and release preview, I think both of them went to a black screen when preparing the computer for the first time. But this one did it out the login screen just like Windows 7 did. And notice how the account picture stays with everything else. It doesn't disappear. And again, no version number. So it's a very different interface, but it shares a lot in common with Windows 7 while still being fresh and new. And that's what kind of made it different and unique at the same time. And here we are at the start screen. Now we have some sample apps here, but we're going to come back to those because obviously we got to install VMware tools. Now since this is Windows 7, it will install VMware tools just fine. I just got to install them. So let's go do that now. And I'm obviously not going to make you guys sit through the VMware tools installation. I'm going to do that off camera. And then when I come back at 1080p resolution, then we can go ahead and proceed. But before I go, I want to show you guys the toast notifications that were new with Windows 8. So here's a toast notification here. Just popped up plain and center over the desktop. And of course, it didn't stay here. Although Windows 10 used the same location for the notifications. Although it didn't obstruct your view nearly as much as this one does. Although that could just be attributed to the low screen resolution. You click on it, it slides away. And then you get a nice little auto run pop up. Now this was much better and a much simplified version of the auto run. Because obviously it doesn't default to popping up and then getting in your way and it's there and you didn't want it. <clears throat> Whereas it'll just show up like a notification by default and dismiss if you don't want it. And of course you can obviously set something else later if you prefer to do so. So like I said, I'm going to be back once I install the drivers and we can go ahead and proceed. Okay, so I'm trying to reboot here and I just experienced a bug where it's stuck on restarting. I've seen some betas do that, and it's not just Windows 8's betas, it's also been Windows Vista's betas, so let's just shut you down and try you again. Or, nope, oh, what the hell did it just do? <laughs> okay, um, okay, let's see if that fixed it. Yeah, now it's, now it's shutting down properly. Okay, that was weird. Because it was like, I was trying to restart, it said restarting, but it didn't restart, and then... I come back to it and it's like it never shut down. It must have gotten stuck on that stupid task host thing that, that likes to get stuck on sometimes. And that's especially true of Windows 8 and 10. They used to get they always get stuck on that stupid task host window on older computers and they can never yeah, they can never shut down. Also that loading symbol had an, a 6 dot on the loading versus the later betas in 8, 8.1 and 10 that had 5. So that's an interesting design cue that causes extra lag. But I put in a password so that when it booted up, it would show the lock screen. This is the lock screen of Windows 8. Now, I think this is someplace in Washington. I don't know where. If it's even in Washington, I might be wrong. Either way, it does look really nice. Now, the cool thing about this is it shows not only the date and time, but also your network status, your battery charge status if you're on a laptop, and it can also show notifications from persistent apps that you set in the control panel to uh, have that sort of functionality. And which could be the weather, it could be a messaging app, it could be uh, Xbox if you had that installed, which wasn't uh, then available, but it could, be, it could have been added later because of course Microsoft and Xbox, you know, they kind of coincide together. But, you know, this was a very reminiscent thing of what was seen on a phone. So it made sense for a tablet, but really not for a desktop because you would have to, you know, click, and you know, here's the Windows mouse cursor, and you have to drag this up. You know, it is very glitch friendly, just like Windows Vista was, but you have to click and drag it up. And there's no pretty animation, so simply if you press a key, it just slides up. There's no, like, grace animation as it slides up. There's nothing fancy like that. And of course, this is the login screen, which looks a lot, you know, similar to Windows 8. A very different login screen, anyway, because again, you cannot change the color at least at this point in time. This was all customizable later on. You could you can change its color, you can change the accent color as it was called later. But yeah, this at this very early stage you couldn't do that. Make your computer easier to use. But this has a neat animation to it. It does pop up Make like computer easier you know whatever. To use. Windows will read and scan it. It uses the narrator and whoever's voice that is, I don't remember, but it has a nice animation and it gives okay. you access to all that stuff. And of course you get a green accented button and then of course a nice animation for your power options. 
So let's go ahead and log in. Now one cool feature about Windows 8 was the fact that you could actually look at passwords before you press submit. And this is also persistent in that of Windows uh, Internet Explorer 10. So you could check your password before you submitted it so that way it wouldn't refresh or give you an error or something like that, you know. But very cool feature and it still is available in Microsoft Edge and Windows 10 today. It's just a little different, but it's there nonetheless. Now, one thing that's interesting is that this is a square button. A lot of elements in Windows 8 are square versus being oval or round or something like that. A very different design element. And also, this is not an arrow. It says submit. So that's a definite design difference. Anyway, <laughs> the virtual machine definitely lags the start screen animation that comes in, which is a very graceful animation, which I'm glad that they kept because obviously... Um, you know, it's a very pretty animation that's still in Windows 8.1 today. Now look at all these apps. We've got plenty to choose from, and this is going to take quite a while to get through. So obviously, the first thing we're going to do is load the desktop, just because that's a very smart thing to do. Now there's a couple things on the desktop that are worth pointing out. The first of which is the user interface has a lot of square elements. Now it's still arrow at this stage. Obviously when Windows 8 came out, the interface was completely flattened and uh, WDDM technologies were improved as well, but mainly the, the desktop window manager had a flat interface to it. Now in this early stage, it was still arrow glass. However, it was more of a Gaussian blur frosted glass look versus actually being a transparent pane of glass. And there's also this new option known as automatic. Now what that did was it allowed you to change your background and it would automatically change the color for you. Now obviously this is a very early version of it, so obviously it's not a very polished icon, but the point was that it's supposed to demonstrate the fact of, hey, you can automatically change your color here. I'm going to go and stretch this nice background because it looks nice. And for those Windows 8 theme packs that were early on that had this sort of flat Windows logo, and by the way, we'll get to that in a moment. Um, this was the background that they used, and it's a very nice background. It's also meant to demonstrate the panoramic wallpaper capabilities of Windows 8, which was also a new thing, because Windows 7 didn't have that. You couldn't span a wallpaper across two screens of differing or equivalent resolutions. So this was definitely something that Windows 8 had going for it new. Now there's some other backgrounds on here, so I need to... Um, I need to go find them. So let me go to browse and go to computer. And... It might have been with the consumer preview. They got some nice, you know, some nice looking backgrounds with the OS. I, it probably was consumer preview. And we'll be lit taking a look at consumer preview later once I get a disk image that actually works. But for now, yeah, we'll leave it on the default background just because it looks kind of nice. This is basically the Windows 7 login background in case anybody was paying attention. But anyway, um, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the Explorer elements. Now one thing that's cool is the new ribbon style of taskbar at that time, which basically improved upon the interface that was used in Microsoft Office and integrated it into their operating system, which gave you a lot of controls that you otherwise wouldn't have known about at a glance. You know, otherwise you would have had to like right click on them like in Windows 7. This also improved uh, tablet friendly uh, access in case you were using this on a tablet PC or something with a touch screen. This gave you a lot easier access to, uh, the, to uh, the important controls instead of tapping and holding on something to right click and pressing a very tiny dialog box like this, which was certainly the case in Windows 8. You know, you could obviously go up here and you can do that too. And the nice thing is you can just hide it away and you get an even cleaner interface. I mean, even cleaner than Windows 7. I mean, it's so much nicer than Windows 7, but this is by default and you obviously want to leave it that way. So the disk is, the disks are as they were in Windows 7, but you get a lot of useful things like uninstalling or changing a program because this is your computer. Your computer properties, control panel, mapping a network drive. I mean, if you click on a hard drive, you can defragment it, you can clean it up, you can format it. These buttons do as they should, and there you go. You know, this is an interesting design cue is that it uses the classic Windows 7 orb, and uh, Arrow has an interesting glitch here. That's kind of funny. But again, no 8 in the version number, so that's something interesting. Also, there's one thing that I found, and it also resides in the control panel. Some of these settings, especially the ones here for the user accounts, are having to be redirected. Now, this is a, the first app we're going to take a look at is the modern control panel, which this button redirects you to. So it redirects you to this app 
that pretty much is trying to replace the classic control panel. Granted, not everything's going to be in here, but it will give you like more access to more things. It allows you to obviously customize it a lot more, I guess, friendly for tablets. It's got this nice interface that's supposed to be nice, but obviously I can't use it. I haven't bothered to try and crack the user interface to try and figure out how all this stuff actually still functions because uh, you cannot choose any kind of customization. There's also this bug where if you scroll, it scrolls both scroll bars. I don't know what the deal is with that. I guess it's just some kind of early on bug. But you can't blame Microsoft. I mean, this stuff is so early on in the betas, you know, obviously it's not going to be perfect. And I don't believe the webcam uh, stuff has been implemented yet. It's just a button that's there, you know, for future implementation but nothing's there yet. And of course, user accounts. There's that option for the Windows Live ID that I mentioned earlier. And if I go ahead and enable the networking to work here, so we're gonna go ahead and do network attachment and connect it to Windows. And we need to go back to the desktop real quickly and configure that. So yes, go ahead. And we're gonna go ahead and go back here. Now, I cannot do a Windows tab because otherwise it'll try to redirect on my Mac. One thing that's cool is you can hover your mouse off to the side and you get this little preview. And what that allows you to do is it allows you to kind of swing apps in from the side. And you can click on those little tiny things and that'll basically take you to those apps. It's very hard to trigger on virtual machines. But there you can see I'm triggering it just fine right there. You just put your mouse onto the side. And normally on a tablet, you would take this, click and drag it in. And you know you could pin an app to the side or vice versa. So let's do that. We can go ahead and pin the desktop to the side. You get this nice little tile here telling you what you have open on your desktop. But if you want to prioritize your desktop, you can prioritize your desktop. However, of course you want to prioritize your main application. So that was a very early on thing that Windows 8 had. Very few apps took advantage of it because the access that the thing gave you on the side is so small. It was only really used for uh, messaging apps, uh, which Windows 8 did come with, and it was actually kind of nice, but they ended up getting rid of it, which I don't know why, but I'll kind of go on to that later once we get into later betas of Windows 8. But the technology was there, and this is a huge thing about Windows 8 that they were trying to push, but obviously it didn't really make much sense until 8.1 when they gave you the special screen cropping. But uh, anyway, now that we've got the networking set up, we can go ahead and take a look at this uh, Windows Live ID sign in. Stupid thing. Interesting that it is disabled. Okay, we'll have to go to Internet Explorer and enable that ActiveX control. So, cool sort of, uh, uh, bleh, bleh. You know the whole Windows key D shortcut that you can use to get to their desktop and minimize everything? Well, it still works here, obviously. I guess I won't find it then. But basically, it's like the Microsoft account in Windows 8, 8.1, and it allows you to sign in and do that sort of stuff. And of course, down here, you can add another user. Hey, here we go. Here we go. We'll try this. So let's try and add my thing here. So now it's been added. Now we can go and lock the computer. And now we can get a back arrow, which takes us to this screen. Now, go ahead and sign in. I love this animation. It just pops over, boom, and then boom. It's a very nice animation, something that I wish Windows 8 kept. Anyway, let's try and sign in here and see if it works. I don't think it will. I think all that stuff's been disabled for Windows 8 developer preview. But we're going to go ahead and give it a go anyway because obviously this OS is from 2011. A lot of things probably won't work, but it never hurts to try it anyway. It never does. I have actually gotten the sign-in prompt for the Microsoft account to actually work, but I don't know if it's actually functional at this point, like for Windows 8 anymore. It very well might not be. And if it's not, you know, it's, oh, 
hey, we might be getting someplace. It's actually setting up the PC. <laughs> now, obviously, this looked a lot cleaner when Windows 8 first came out because it just tossed the email address underneath the uh, user account name or whatever the account name was set to on the Microsoft account. But hey, there we go. That's pretty cool. It looks as if it sort of worked. It didn't sync over any desktop background, per se. However, it did sign in. I don't know if that meant that, hey, yeah, very cool. That's pretty cool. So it actually ended up working out in the end. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and sign this out. Or actually, no, we'll use this account. We'll just sign out the other one. And I want to show this really cool feature with the new task manager, which allows you to take a look at users and it shows their status and you can obviously disconnect them, switch user accounts, all that sort of stuff. And of course we could swap on over, slide up the lock screen and log in and Bob's your uncle. And there we go. Blech. There we go. I don't talk like a weirdo. There's this button up in the upper right hand corner. Now the font wasn't so big in Windows 8 when it first came out, but this is sort of a cool concept that allowed you to change your user tile, lock the machine, so on and so forth. But we're going to go ahead and log this off because obviously we need to use the other, or I want to use the other account because it's got my Microsoft account in it. It actually freaking worked. Somehow it worked. I don't know how it did. But because it did, we're going to use it because there's some apps that I know would actually benefit from having that sort of thing. So obviously this is a cool thing that I like about the task manager is it allows you to take a look at system specifications from right here and also allows you to check how much memory you're using at the same time. Windows 8 was a very memory efficient OS, especially the 32-bit one on a netbook because they brag so much about how the minimum requirements for Windows 8 were actually a lot better and uh, you know supposed to be more memory efficient, that sort of thing. Well. They weren't joking around. Windows 8 is probably one of the more efficient modern OS's that I've seen. So, let's go ahead and get started here. Now that I've talked way too long about everything, although you probably should have expected this to be a long video anyway. So, let's go ahead and uh, set Internet Explorer as the default browser because otherwise it's not going to let me do what I'd like to do. Okay, so I had to do a little bit of digging, but I finally found it. I forgot where the setting was, but I finally got what I wanted to have enabled, and that was the modern Internet Explorer. So let's take a look. This is, you know, Internet Explorer never has been the best interface, but this is a huge change over, <laughs> well, Internet Explorer on the desktop. Let's go ahead and take a look at it on the desktop. Now, on the desktop, it has the same interface comparative to Internet Explorer 9, no big deal. Obviously... You know, this is just a squared R version of Internet Explorer 10 developer preview. Very, very early version of Internet Explorer 10. So obviously all the updates are pre-release. And don't believe you can actually update that anymore. But anyway, let's all tab back over. Here's the interface for Internet Explorer 10. It's a very different interface. Now, the address bar is at the bottom. And when you start to scroll, and let's grab a better website to demonstrate this sort of thing. Let's go to YouTube.com. It's going to hate me because I'm using Internet Explorer 10, but that's okay. I don't care if my browser is no longer supported. I'm just demonstrating a point here. So, so here we have a website that is a lot bigger. I don't know why, but this headline is fuzzy compared to the rest of the website. I guess it's just still loading or something. I don't know what the deal is. Some kind of weird, you know, cropping thing. But here's a website. Now, if this was on a touchscreen device, then that address bar at the bottom would disappear out of the way. Although that was after uh, Windows 8 first came out that they developed all the smooth animation and stuff like that. Now, if you wanted to get access to your tabs, you would simply right-click, and here would be your tabbed interface. And here you can add more tabs, and here you know, there's your address bar. There's your reload button, and you can... Now, one thing that's interesting, you, have to right, you can right-click at the top and get access to the interface, too, because this is where the swipe down gesture came in in Windows 8. It was more like a swipe up from the bottom that brought forth the tabbed interface sort of thing. A very cool concept, but one that really doesn't look that great today. The interface is very sloppy and whatnot. And it also allows you to pin a page to your start screen. So for example, if I want to have YouTube on my start screen, I can just pin it to my start screen. And when I go to my start screen, there's YouTube. I click on it, and there it is. Granted, I think it's going to have to load another tab. I don't know for sure. Uh, come on. 
It's very slow. This is not a very fast web browser, if you haven't already noticed, but it demonstrates the point well enough. So, yeah. Anyway, so that's that. Now we can go ahead, I'm going to try and close it. There's supposed to be this whole concept where you take an app and you're supposed to be able to not only drag it out, but like, like I told you, this is a real pain to do when it comes to VMware. It's really hard to drag an app over. It's really difficult. You have to do it right there. And then you're supposed to be able to drag an app down. Now the functionality is not here yet, but it would allow you to drag the, an app card downward and uh, close it. Although I think that's because it's a desktop, it won't let me do it. No, it doesn't do it for any app, so you have to... You can't even drag it down to close it. Yep, nope, 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 don't do it, don't do it. Get out of here, get out of here, copyright, you're gonna screw me over. Okay, the developer preview, you cannot close any of the modern apps. You have to force close them. That's the kind of downside to doing this. You have to force close all your applications. But yeah, we avoided copyright there. Now. Here's the Windows Store. It doesn't work. What well, you know, there's got to be a catch to that sort of thing. But here you can see, you know, obviously it's not available. But the concept is there. Basically, it's just a placeholder sort of thing. And this is the perfect place to kind of demonstrate the charms. Now, charms were a new thing in Windows 8 that were not obviously available in Windows 7. Now, in this very, very early form, it was designed to be down in the lower left where the start button is. And you can get at this from anywhere in the system, doesn't matter what app you're running. Whether you be on the desktop with this off-colored start button that really looks ugly comparative to the rest of the interface, but it makes sense considering that this is a developer preview. Or you can get this sort of menu that you can scroll through. Now, the biggest thing is the settings, but obviously we'll come back to that later. So since we're at the start screen, we can go ahead and click search, and it brings us to our apps, and we can search our apps. And by the way, this is our app tray essentially. This is our start menu app tray, all alphabetized, and I don't believe you can actually change the sorting of this yet because obviously it's such an early beta and I keep dragging things in my dock and I really shouldn't be. But anyway, there's some apps in here that we can do and there's some also some ARM-based utilities that we can use, but uh, we're not going to get into that because uh, it's kind of too complex. Anyway, Windows Explorer is the Windows Explorer the control panel is the modern control panel that we briefly took a look at. And sorry, we have to go to the desktop control panel to activate Windows. That's a big deal. Obviously, we have to do that. Um, but yeah, it won't activate. And I've tried. It will not activate. You have to crack it manually yourself to get all the features. But who really wants to do that? I don't know why you would. Anyway, so since we have a Microsoft account, or in this case, a Windows Live ID, we can actually open up the Build Windows app. But uh, we need to sign in. So, yeah, it doesn't look like it works. <laughs> no. I think it's because Build 2011 is not, you know, not in service anymore. I don't think it's supposed to be. But what would you expect? Socialite is another app that is supposed to, you know, bring in your Facebook and whatever. But I don't know if it's actually supposed to work or not. I've tried it, and I tried signing into it. I've gave it, I've gave it my permission and it just sits there and says logging in and it never does anything. So I don't know if that's functional or not anymore. News is supposed to be this RSS feed reader. And, you know, you put in your RSS feed URL and it's supposed to read your RSS feeds, you know, kind of cool. Tweet at Rama, or Tweet Arama as it's supposed to probably be called, is a modern Twitter client, which apparently still sort of exists. It is obviously made by Microsoft. It's supposed to be a placeholder application. I'll go ahead and try and sign into this and see if it actually works. Yep, it doesn't look like anything special has happened. But this is sort of an app interface. It scrolls horizontally. It does not scroll vertically. And you can tweet using this. I don't know. I'm going to try... Tweet from Tweet at Rama from Windows 8 Build A102. I don't know if it's actually going to work. I don't think so. But you know what? Yeah, couldn't send. Try again. And uh, let's go ahead and bring in Safari here on the other screen. And it won't let me because this is in full screen. So let's just change that and bring this on over. And let's go to Twitter. I don't know if that's going to show up or not. So I'm going to do it on my own side and I'll be back. Yeah, it doesn't look as if it's actually showed up. But that doesn't surprise me considering uh, it didn't you know, work for the first time. So I'm going to let that fix its resolution. The next thing is stocks. We all know stocks. And these actually work, which is kind of cool. And uh, it's 
not a very pretty user interface, but it does, for the most part, show you Microsoft News and other stuff. Now, this is where the Settings button comes in. It allows you to change access, and it would allow you to add stocks or other stuff, weekly, monthly, yearly. However, that information doesn't work anymore. But this is what the interface would have looked like. It would have been more complete. And then weather is a bit of a disappointment. The weather app doesn't work anymore. It doesn't. It's sad. It doesn't allow us to look at the weather. The, the weather app in this version of Windows had the most beautiful interface with a live background. It was just so beautiful, but uh, it doesn't work anymore, sadly. We'll come back to these later because they're, well, <laughs> they're going to take a while to load. For example, if I try to load Visual Studio, it is licensed to Microsoft and it is a developer preview. It's specifically made for this product. So apparently in order to continue using this product, I need to upgrade to the latest release, which redirects me to the modern Internet Explorer. I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to change the date in order to launch that. So that's why I haven't bothered with all this developer crap, because obviously, <laughs> you know, it's not going to be very useful. But, you know, you can also do stuff here with the command prompt and launch applications and debug apps and stuff like that. So, let me clear out some RAM and I'll be back. And we can take a look at some of these games and apps that run in the modern environment. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started with some of the games here. In the God damn it, I keep dragging stuff with my dog. Stay on the other screen. Okay, so here we have this icon with five, called Five in a Row. And essentially, this is like reverse -y, except it's for the modern Windows platform. We all know how Windows was when Reversey came out. So let's go ahead and pick a spot here. And uh, we'll go ahead and we'll put him right there. Oh, he's going to be very clever with me. So I'm going to be clever back and put mine down there. <laughs> I'm probably going to end up beating him. Oh, he beat myself. Dang it. Well, guess what? I'm going to block him out. And then he's going to get creative and I'm going to block. <laughs> Screw you. But yeah. This is kind of a demonstration as to the capabilities of the platform at the time. And uh, he's going to try and get clever. But uh, we're going to do this. I'm going to do that. Oh, black wins. Well, well, that's a shame. Dismiss. He, went, he won over on that corner. I should have put it over there. But whatever. It's a game. It works. It does its job. We have a piano app, which is kind of like a garage band, only it's just a piano, at least as far as I'm aware. You know, if you go over to settings, there's no way you can change any of the instruments. And all you get is the all you get is the keys and you can have it play a song for you, one that's pre-programmed in, or you can record one too. You change the position, change the range of keys, and then Yeah, that's kinda neato. Let's see how some of the songs are. Let's try playing the piano sonata. And then I can go ahead and walk out of this app, and it should suspend itself when I go to something else. Like, for example, if I go back to the desktop, the app stops playing the music. If I go back into the app, it starts playing again. So that kind of demonstrates the whole app suspension thing, which was new at the time. Paint Play looks like it's some kind of modern paint application, which, <laughs> considering I'm using a virtual machine, the latency is really bad. But, you know, it's that sort of thing. Labyrinth looks like it's some kind of uh, game where I think you use the arrow keys. You're supposed to take this circle and drag it through. This would probably be a lot more friendly if I had some kind of a uh, touch screen or something like that. And uh, there we go. Yeah, 17 seconds. I only got three stars, so they had to figure out the controls. So this would probably demonstrate the whole fact of um, an accelerometer. Whoops, I lost there. So this is supposed to be a lot easier for an accelerometer-based device to be able to play. Very elegant game with some subtle music to it. And, uh, yeah, a bit more. There's a more advanced level. We kind of got to work our way around here. I remember seeing a very similar game based to this on uh, HTC-based Android devices. 
and it used the accelerometer to play. It was kind of a fun game back in the day when my mom had an HTC Evo 4G as her daily smartphone on uh, Sprint. Back when the Sprint 4G network was a big deal. Yeah, this game is very difficult to play with the arrow keys because you keep bumping into everything because the controls are not very precise at all. And I gotta be careful so I don't lose any lives there. But it's a very bright, colorful, positive mood game. And actually, I really wouldn't mind playing that a lot. But we have a video to make, so there's that. Mopod, this is some kind of sessions thing, a podcasting application. It's supposed to have all sorts of stuff that you can stream and play music with. We can go and click on something here and add a feed or something like that. However, it's all supposed to be internet-based and it doesn't work anymore. So that kind of sucks. Although, it looks like this one works. So let's go ahead and open it up and uh, let's take a look at this one. Radio Lingua News. 26th of September, 2008. I guess these are built in. Huh. For some reason there's this glitch in the corner. Don't know what's out of, what that's about. Happy European Day of Languages. You're listening to a special news broadcast from the Radiolingua Network. I'm Mark, and I'm here to bring you the very latest news about some exciting developments. See, now this is an app that takes advantage of the right-clicking, or the swipe up from the bottom gesture that was used in Windows 8. But that seems to work just fine. It seems like it has streams built into it. The next app on our list is PickStream. Now this is supposed to be some kind of Flickr client, but I don't know if it works anymore. So let's see if it works here. Let's see. We're still on the splash screen uses the Flickr API, but is not endorsed or certified by Flickr, so yeah, that's always confidence inspiring, you know, but yeah, beta software, that's all we like to know, and it doesn't look like it works anymore because it just crashed. Well, that's always useful. Anyway, next thing on our list is the tile puzzle. Nice creative logo there. Here we have a picture. I don't know if this scrambles as soon as I, yeah, it does as soon as I click it. And I'm assuming that you just drag that, and... I'm sure I could figure this out had I have enough time with it, but since I have a video to make, I'm not going to focus on that. Near me, what's this? Uh, probably another Microsoft-endorsed app, I'm pretty sure. Obviously, Microsoft has had some kind of endorsement. Yeah, sure. Not like my location so, so, so important anyway. It's not like it's going to load anything. But as you can see, there's a few things that you can take a look at here on this app, apparently. So let's see. Sightseeing. Yep, no search results found. Although we get a nice picture of Seattle, so that's kind of nice, I guess. I don't know how you're supposed to go back in an app like this. I guess you press home. Adventure, nothing, of course. Big night out, nothing, of course. Let's, let's grab a map here. Yeah, it thinks I'm in Seattle. So, yeah, that's pretty uh, unuseful. Where the heck are... Yeah, it thinks I'm over in uh, California. Wow, that's productive, you know? Anyway, so that's near me. Another app we have is Alarms. Now, this is a default one that came in Windows 8, although it looked significantly different compared to the one in this. But you'd expect that. So let's see here. Add an alarm. Then we can make an alarm. We'll call it Test. And then, let's see. You get a big row of numbers, as always, and be AM or PM, whatever you choose. Very simple, very clean. We have a game here, it looks like, called Zero Gravity, the gripping tales of a really lost astronaut. Well, we'll see how it is here. It does take a while to load. Yeah, it's taking quite a while to load. And it looks like it doesn't even work, so... I don't know. I guess I'll try that here once again. I'll see. If I can get it to work, then I'll record it, but if not, we'll move on. Sadly, no luck with zero gravity. I don't know if it's because this virtual machine I have set currently does not have enough RAM. That could be the problem. I might come back to it later and make an addendum to this video. I should probably unpin YouTube. You can see some options here. We can go and unpin that from the start screen. Measure it. What's this? Welcome to measure it. Use the tools in the bar below to draw any shape. The known length of the red line will be used to automatically calculate measurements for the new shape. Interesting. Has this totally generic 
background for some reason. I don't know what this is supposed to be about. I don't know if you're... Oh, interesting. You can import your own photo, and you can then place measurements over it. That's kind of neat. Let's see. We can draw a rectangle here. And there we go. There's the dimensions of the rectangle. You can then take it, make it bigger, see the dimensions of it. I can actually see that as being pretty useful, especially for home renovation. I can see that as being useful. Anyway, we have Treehouse Stampede. This looks like another game. And it looks like it actually works on this one, although it looks kind of amateurish, and this kid does not look like he's very enthusiastic about it. Who really knows? Use the letters to make a word. I don't know what these are supposed to be for. I don't see any kind of letters whatsoever. I don't know how you're supposed to play this. I don't see any kind of letters whatsoever. L M N. Oh, I might not have been paying attention here. Uh, let's see. L M N. Not a word. Well, I don't know how you're supposed to make a word out of just those. I really do not know. So let's see here. I don't think I can press Alt F4 because it's just going to redirect me to the Mac desktop. Yeah, it just did. So I definitely have to press Windows key D and then I have to end it with Task Manager. So that is definitely one of the biggest downsides of working with this OS is that you have to manually end everything. It's not exactly easy to do all that stuff. Use the letters to make a word. Let's see. There we go. Tournament. Scan. Let's see. What's a word that uses TCN? Let's see. I don't even know. I'm going to skip that one. Y L N. No, it's not the word I'm thinking about. I don't even know. But anyway, it's a good app for testing vocabulary of children, I suppose. Something kind of useful. It's the next thing on the list. Too brighter. I think I was taking a look at this earlier, and it's a game that you can use where you have to drag a piece above with your mouse to try and get them to the water. If you don't like the piece you took, you can just grab another one and your first one will disappear. Okay, so I see. You can swipe and it'll fix that. Let's see, press the space bar while dragging. Now join. The oh my god. I don't think that's an intended effect of the app. <laughs> uh, help. <laughs> Wait for it to suspend. I had to click on the desktop here. Okay, let's see, what's the next one we can take a look at? Memories. Let's take a look at this one. Well, that one don't work either. Well, that sucks. Word Hunt. There we go. We got Time Challenge, we got an Unlimited Mode, we got Achievements, and Tap and Play. We'll go ahead and do the Unlimited Mode here. Oh, I see. That's how you do it, so you don't screw up on it. Okay, I see what that is. Okay, so that makes sense. Let's see. Let's do... I, I assume you can only go, like, this direction and this direction and that sort of thing, I'm pretty sure. Because, yeah, you have to drag. So, let's see. Uh, what can we make that's a word? No. What can we make here? Not a very good selection right out the gate. That's not a very good one. Because uh, you can't go di Oh, you can't do... No, you cannot go diagonally. Oh, well, let's see. Uh, yeah, you really don't get a lot of choice with this, do you? This is a bad game. Can I right-click and get out of this? Yes, I can. Yeah, I know. Words missed. Okay. Whatever. I'm not very smart anyway. So new game. I just pressed new game. Uh, whatever. Anyway, 
gives us some fresh words here. Let's see. Uh, what do we got? So we got ran. Whoops. R A N. There we go. Let's see. Two. Oh, that's right. It has to be three letters or bigger. Uh, do, 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 do. And, you know, that's one. Uh, ran. I already got ran. Uh, net. Let's see. Met. Uh, dog. God. Whoops. God. There we go. Let's see. Ion. Uh, da, 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 da. Hand. Uh, DNA. I don't, that's not a word. Uh, do, 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 do. I don't think GED is a word, so I'm not going to try it. Let's see. Melt. Oh, let's see. Men. We got ton. That's all I can think of. I know there's probably a hundred words out of all of this that you could probably form. Uh, let's see. Probably do gem. Whoops, I can spell it correctly. Meg. Yes, Meg's a word. <laughs> see, maybe H A N? No, it's not a word. I didn't figure as such. Not. Okay. Well, that's, that's pretty fun. I could play that. Note space. It's this thing. To start creating notes, bring up the app bar. The top app bar contains two panes. The topmost one, dark blue, is used to control the regions. Try tapping on it to see the relevant controls on the bottom app bar. The one below that one, light blue, is an overview of the entire workspace. The dark blue rectangle represents the current view and it can be moved around. The bottom app bar provides controls for the selected item. For instance, a text note has different controls from an ink note. So I'm assuming you're supposed to right click. Yes, you do. And let's go ahead and do a text input here. And the dark one, is, or the light one, is supposed to be the one you carry around. And we can do this is a text, or text box. It cannot spell today. And then we can right click and maybe we can make an ink thing. And there we go, we can jot something down into this real quick. You know, hey, that works pretty well. And of course, there's a group. You can link these together or you can link these two together. Very useful. Although, probably not really that useful because I don't know if they go anywhere other than staying within the app itself. Flashcards. I think I tried these briefly and this is supposed to be like a test of something, I guess, I don't know. We got a mute button. Is there any kind of charm settings that we can set here? No, there's not. I wonder how many of the other apps that are on the start screen are actually licensed by Microsoft Corporation. That's kind of interesting. Let's see if Word Hunt has anything in it that's by Microsoft. Yeah, everything is by Microsoft. So there's a there's a nice blend of stuff in here. It's kind of nice. God damn it, if I quit moving stuff out of my dock, that would be much appreciated. I don't want to remove QuickTime. Thank you very much. Sudoku, everybody's favorite game, you know. I wasn't gonna bother with the flashcards because obviously flashcards are kind of boring. Who knows if Sudoku even works? Uh, that's questionable at this point. I mean, it's very questionable at this point. It's so questionable to the fact that it just crashes. Well, that's always useful. Um, let's see, Checkmate. I'm assuming this is some kind of like checkers game. Um, presumably. I don't know. Something's weird about this, and some apps just don't work. I think I'm going to have to reboot. I think that's what I'm going to end up having to do. So that kind of sucks. I'm just having bad luck today with this, and it doesn't want to work. How about copper? Does that work? It was working the one time I tried it. Okay, it does work. Welcome to copper. This tutorial will teach you what you need to know to become an expert navigator through this unusual world. Tap anywhere on the screen to continue. To move the robot, swipe over the robot in the direction you want it to go, although you can just use the arrow keys. Push the block, you can rotate the gear, so if you click the gear on the exterior, you can then drag it around so you can see what you're doing. And I don't have any kind of two-finger pinch control, so I'm just going to do... No, I can't do that because this is Mac. I'm assuming you use... Yeah, you use Command, and you zoom that way. Okay, there we go. Except you got to be careful because it's going to take you out of the app. So let's go back into it here. Tap to continue. Tap to continue. Turn left to continue for some reason. All right, there we go. Uh, 
has a very choppy animation. I'm assuming... Oh, three spaces will deactivate it. Okay, so that makes sense. So you want to go down this, and you want to go down this. And then come down this. And then go all the way to the end. Okay, I'll be honest with you guys. This is annoying music. So we're just going to go ahead and get out of that. And we're going to go to the desktop so that way it disables the music. And let's see here. We got ink pad, whatever this is. Verba volant scripta manent. That's supposed to be some kind of different thing I don't know about. I guess it is. I don't know. I cannot select that. Okay, well that's useful. Uh, what can we do here? Apparently this is supposed to be some kind of like drawing app that's meant to take advantage of touch screens or something, I guess. It's very limited in its capabilities. So yeah, this is, it's supposed to be some kind of like, whoops, note taking thing, I guess you're supposed to use or whatever. I don't know what the real purpose of that's supposed to be, but it's there. Uh, Bitbox, I'm assuming is some kind of uh, music making thing. I'm not entirely sure. Let's go ahead and add a sample from Visual Studio templates. I'm assuming, or okay, I see. Um, it's supposed to be some kind of like Visual Basic thing that you make or something. I'm not entirely familiar with that. Anyway, um, aircraft. I'm assuming is some kind of game. All right, we have a paper airplane. So view instructions. What do we got here? Oh, okay. It teaches you how to make a paper airplane. Okay, cool. So that's kind of nice. So essentially, this is just a 3D paper airplane in a very basic way of showing you how to make a paper airplane. Something very basic, I guess. I mean, it's meant to be there for some reason. So I'm going to go ahead and reboot. And I'm going to see if some of these glitches go away. I'm not entirely sure what's going on, but I'm going to reboot the virtual machine here, and then we're going to give those another go. Well, since I couldn't get any of the other games to work, I'm just going to assume that it's a symptom of the beta software that this is. So from there, I don't know. There's not really much else to say, because obviously I can't update the OS with any bug fixes because it's encountered an unknown error. Although I don't know if that's just a symptom of the fact that the Windows update might just be broken because there's no service packs or what the deal might possibly be. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's very professional, you know that, right? So I think for now I'm going to go ahead and end the video here since I have some other things I'd like to get to, including working on the next video or vice versa, you know, some other things. So until next time, guys, appreciate you taking the time to watch and I'll see you next time.